Uh, our first speaker uh, is Dr. Joanna Starles, who is to, immediately to my left. Um, she is an associate professor in the Department of Medicine at Albert Einstein College of Medicine at Montefiore Medical Center. And uh, just briefly, she um, has focuses her clinical research and teaching as well as policy-related activities on improving opioid management for adults with chronic pain. And um, I just want to thank her and all of our panelists for, for being willing to speak with the committee today. Uh, so I'll turn us to uh, Dr. Stahls first. Thanks. Hi, everybody. I'm happy to be here. Just need to figure out how I advance my slides here. Okay. All right, six minutes. Um, so the question that we were tasked with is, as you heard, what are the acute painful medical conditions for which guidelines for prescribing opioids should be a priority and why? This really has two parts to it, and I'm going to address each of them a bit separately. The first is what are the conditions where opioids may be appropriate, and the second is how should we prioritize targets for our guidelines? And again, I'm speaking from an internal medicine perspective. In order to help me figure out what are the conditions, I looked at the data, and I pulled both EMR data from our system and did a poll of my internal medicine colleagues. First, we identified internal medicine outpatient visits that happened in 2018 at which a new opioid was prescribed, and that means the patient had no previous opioids in the preceding six months. And we extracted the ICD-10 codes from those encounters, and I manually classified them to identify the ones that were likely an acute pain condition. Then I categorized those into different groups of acute pain conditions, such as I lumped all the skin and soft tissue infections together, back and spine pain, et cetera, and identified the prevalence of each category. The first thing that I want to point out, which does have implications, is that in about a quarter, I could not find a acute pain condition that was diagnosed um, or at least billed at that visit. So 10% had no clear pain diagnosis, 13% had chronic pain conditions being diagnosed only, and only 50% had one acute pain condition. The remaining quarter had more than one, so they might have had back pain and knee pain, for example. Of the 285 acute pain encounters, half of them had a back or spine pain diagnosis, and almost a quarter had joint pain. Then we decreased in prevalence. Migraines was high. Traumatic injury, such as a fracture or a sprain, was pretty high. Some abdominal pain, which may have been postoperative. Um, that's hard to tease out. Some chest pain, limb pain, neuropathy, cancer, and a spattering, smattering of other um, diagnoses, which were less frequent. I also surveyed my internal medicine, general internal medicine colleagues and asked them, Give me your top five conditions that you manage as an outpatient where opioids may be indicated. And the number one and two that they told me was postoperative pain. So not really a medical condition, but our internists at office visits are treating a lot of um, postoperative pain, as well as fractures. Then they listed joint pain, kidney stones, cancer pain. Um, back and spine pain, sickle cell crises. I work in the Bronx, and we have a high prevalence um, of patients with sickle cell, relatively. Um, dental infections and others. Interestingly, although I didn't ask my providers for caveats, they gave me a lot of caveats. So they said things like, only if pain is not responsive to NSAIDs or acetaminophen, or if those are contraindicated, would opioids be appropriate, only if the pain results in inability to walk or function, only if the pain is very severe, or some said only if a procedure is planned, so maybe prescribing opioids um, before a joint, a scheduled joint um, replacement or procedure. 
So in thinking about this, um, the way that I saw us as being tasked to prioritize would be based on really three things. One, I was thinking about which of these are common causes of acute pain, um, for which there's either unclear evidence for using opioids or there's a lack of existing guidance. So this is my top 10. I tried to get it to five, but it's 10. Um, so even though I'm an internist, postoperative pain is important. And importantly, the perioperative guidelines for pain management that do exist are not really targeting general internists. And many of us are probably not aware that they exist. Um, sickle cell crises I put up high, even though it's not a high prevalence, because there's a real lack of data about managing acute sickle cell crises. And opioids are commonly used. Dental caries and infections, also highly prevalent. Acute cancer pain, we have spent a lot of time talking about non-cancer pain and guidelines for non-cancer pain, um, but we should not forget acute cancer pain. Acute spine pain, I put lower down, even though it is number one prevalence, um, only because there are some guidelines that already exist, for example, from the American College of Physicians. Acute joint pain is important, fractures and trauma, kidney stones or nephrolithiasis, shingles, and migraines. And I put migraines down at the bottom um, because we have good evidence um, and the national societies suggest that we should not be prescribing opioids for migraines, but it is still being done. Some other considerations I want to close with. You'll notice that some of these acute pain conditions are specific diagnoses, like shingles, and some of them are groups that are general types of pain or locations of pain, like spine pain or back pain, joint pain. Um, so that's something that will have to be teased out, and I think we'll talk about that in a later session. Any evidence review and recommendations about opioid appropriateness should consider the previous treatments that a patient has tried, contraindications and comorbidities that patient has, the functional impact of their pain, for, and for postoperative pain, the types of procedures. And ultimately, if a goal is to develop quality indicators, which will be likely to come from guidelines that are produced, we need to consider the difficulty of capturing the indication for acute pain in the um, medical record. As we saw, many, the majority of the visits that I found did not have a single type of acute pain as a diagnosis. Thank you.